All right, welcome everyone. So glad you are all on this Design Bytes webinar. Um, it's gonna be really fast today, 15 minutes. We'll move really quickly. Thanks for attending. Uh, thanks to NHB for asking us to speak. Uh, this is the disclaimer. Won't read the whole thing, but I'll can send it to you afterwards if you'd like. Our email address is on the next slide. Basically, it just says that the NHB, NHB isn't responsible for anything that Chris or I say um, and has no liability for what we say either, which is a really good thing, probably, hopefully not. Um, here's some quick introductions. I get the opportunity to present with my really good friend, Chris Grady, today. He's one of the very best land planners in the business and in the entire country. He's a principal at Kephart. 35 years of experience on all kinds of projects um, and the director of planning there. Um, Kepert's a planning and landscape, or planning and architecture firm here in Denver. I'm Jared Carlin, a Colorado native. I started at Norris Design as an intern a very long time ago um, and work on a wide variety of land planning and landscape architectural projects. Norris Design's a land planning, landscape architecture and branding firm. Um, Today, we're gonna to give you some tips on what we've learned on how to, de to design engaging places. And the hope is that we'll give you a little inspiration on your own projects. Here are the six um, secrets that we're gonna talk about with you today. Um, offer a mix of housing choices, design special places, create walkable connected neighborhoods, provide safe and friendly streets, be environmentally sensitive and do something different. So with that, I'll turn it over to Chris to get things started. Welcome everyone. We're glad you've joined us today. Our first secret is offering a mix of housing choices. So just remember that variety is the spice of community life. And especially as you begin your project, ensure that there's flexibility in zoning to respond to changing market conditions. Next, please. Next image. So know your market. Provide diverse housing opportunities and a mix of building types and densities. Oh, we went too far, Jared, gotta go back. There we go. So we, we, we wanna make sure you know the market, provide diverse housing opportunities and a mix of building types and densities. Ensure a range of home sizes and price points. Who's your, who's your buyer, who's your renter? And what are they looking for in a community? So just remember to do your research. And also consider variety in architectural styles and scale. What's the result of that? Uh, it's faster absorption, uh, deeper market penetration, and that will build uh, and create value for you and your, your, your new residents. And you know the market is now more diverse than ever. There are so many ways of life out there, right? Uh, so remember that a well-designed and, 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 and successful community delivers to its residents the ability to grow up grow old in place. So be flexible and be able to respond to a changing market. Next, please. So here's an example of staying flexible and keeping your eye on the marketplace. And we're seeing so much more rent by choice out there. It's not just stacked flat apartments. Uh, people are spending more time at home and they need extra living space. And we're seeing that the popularity of single family for rent is on the rise. And at Birdsong at Alamo Ranch in San Antonio, Texas, this higher density single family rental neighborhood needs to include desirable features such as walkable streets, which is having the front door on the street and uh, perhaps a landscape courtyard. Uh, we wanna make sure we got private yards for each home, uh, a variety of amenities close by, and then proximate parking, uh, parking that's much closer than auto courts in our typical garden apartments. Next, please. And then more features. We want to see well-designed and attractive homes as uh, single units or paired. And in, in higher density neighborhoods like Birdsong, the relationship of indoor and outdoor space is very critical. Next. And then locate a variety of active and passive recreation areas throughout. So include a clubhouse with pool and fitness. Make it a resort, uh, much like many of our luxury apartment rental projects. So in summary, respond to changing market constraints and keep your finger on the pulse and stay flexible. Next. All right. 
Thanks, Chris. The second secret is design special places. Uh, seems like a no brainer, but design special places on every one of your projects. Something should be special about it. I'm gonna show you a few things that will hopefully, hopefully inspire you on those projects. This is Rain Dance, an agriculturally themed community. We'll show Rain Dance as an example several times, but this shows the community pool with a tractor for the kiddos to play on and a center pivot irrigation water feature playing off of the agricultural theme. Uh, it is a special place at Rain Dance. Here's a bird's eye of the pool. It's big, but it's about the big and little details. You can see the center pivot irrigation that anchors the agricultural the, um, theme design for the whole pool area. The pool is shaped partially in the shape of the Rain Dance community logo, which is pretty cool. And notice the details of the buildings kind of acting like grain bins. And even when you don't have the space that Rain Dance has, that doesn't mean you can't create an awesome playground in a smaller muse like this one at Midtown in Adams County, Colorado. And so remember when designing special places, that you know, building a place, building community, it starts with life. Think about how we live. That's the way to create meaningful and memorable places. And it's how we provide awesome amenities that residents can really enjoy. And this can include uh, sports and play fields, picnic and gathering areas, community gardens, um, amenities for all age levels, uh, space for small events with food trucks, and then areas for a, perhaps a farmer's market, an art walk, or a concert. Next. So it's important that these special places can be viewed from public, uh, public space, make them visible, uh, make them neighborhood focal points is in this example you're seeing right here. And then consider trade-offs of larger lots for common areas for the benefit of all residents. Uh, ensure walkability and provide each smaller neighborhood within the community a special place to visit and experience. So remember, designing special places is essential in building community. Next. All right, the third secret, create walkable and connected neighborhoods. Walkability is so important, especially with what we're dealing with in our world right now with people wanting to get out of their homes and get some fresh air. You should understand how Far people usually want to walk and plan your communities accordingly. Here at Baseline, we deliberately planned off-street gardenways that connect the community. The gardenways also act as pollinator corridors to help the overall health of the community. Pollinators are those little things like butterflies that you see in the image there on the upper right that help pollinate plants. Back to Rain Dance, it's more than just trails that connects, connect the community. It's also understanding that there are active recreational spaces close to everyone. Rain Dance has fun functional farms for the community that act as buffers to the surrounding busy highways that are also integrated with passive open space connections, all layered together to create an immersive connective community. It's also important not to forget about the other areas in your community um, to make them walkable, like, like activating medians at this project in Thornton called Parterre. We envision these key gathering areas and walkability um, points really early on with the first steps of master planning. So in creating walkable, connected neighborhoods, I want to remind all of you that the backbone of the community is its open space network. So ensure a hierarchy of trail connections, walkways, and paseos. Uh, create, port, uh, create important connections to special places and other neighborhoods within the community. And then use open space and preserve features as connections. And then and remember the streets are also important as thoughtful resident connections, as we'll see in a moment. And we'll go to the next. All right, another secret of creating successful communities is providing safe and friendly streets. Next. Okay, I'm sure we've all seen this. Neighborhoods with excessive street widths, uh, less desirable edges uh, with no sidewalks or attached sidewalks to the street. Uh, basically devoid of living to the street. Uh, it's garage dominant and which celebrates the car and not the resident experience. Next. And so whether a, whether a garage fronts the street or is accessed in a rear alley, the homes should live to the street. And remember that the streets are so important in all those connections throughout the community and, and individual neighborhoods. 
Um, but at homes living to the street, please de-emphasize the car. Prioritize the resident experience. Uh, vary setbacks appropriately. Push that. Push the garage back and bring the living space forward. And create safe zones that establish a hierarchy with buffers. And then the next thing and to the right of this uh, image is employ traffic calming devices. Um, introduce neck downs of streets at intersections and pedestrian crossings. And what will this do? It'll increase landscaping, uh, define crosswalks, and define parking. So remember that the street is an essential part of the open space network. So prioritize that resident experience. You can also look at uh, providing safe and friendly streets and taking it com completely to the next level, like this true suburban wound earth in Broomfield, Colorado. Um, it's a street with one lane of travel with some parking in the middle that helps separate the cars from the pedestrian. But it really is all about the pedestrian. And in order to do so, we need to figure out the, the details, like where's the fire lane? Because it can't go down the middle of this. So it's, um, it's in the alleys behind the homes and the row homes, or where are the utilities? They're still there, but we have movable planners and site furniture. So about looking at the infrastructure differently and working with the municipality a little bit differently to create a, a friendly street. Here's a picture of the Wooner kind of in the center uh, where we have a park planned. There's a street running through it, but the car is in a pedestrian zone instead of a pedestrian in a street. Notice the view to the right, the plan view to the right. It feels like a plaza because it really is. Um, the posted speed limit will be 7.5 miles per hour. And we're actually creating signs that say that as this gets built. The fifth secret is be environmentally sensitive. Uh, we're back to rain dance again. Uh, with rain dance, it's all about farm to table, farm to everything, even farm to school. They serve this serves all aspects of the community. Uh, with Rain Dance, we truly took suburban agriculture to the next level. It's all about the details too, like seasonality for multiple harvests, street names that focus on growing seasons. Here's some images of life in the farm. Keep in mind the importance of being outside, especially right now, and connecting with nature, with everything that's going on in the world, and programming those activities in neighborhoods. People are moving to places where there's a better opportunity to be outside and it's more important to do that within your communities now than ever. And it's a full network of places to be outside like we talked about all across the community, not just farms, but orchards and pollinator gardens, the next level for planning for sustainability. You know, this is rain dance is at a large scale, but similar things can be introduced into smaller communities for sure. All right, and finally, have fun and don't be afraid to do something different. Next. Uh, be creative and be intentional. Uh, as part of our resident experience at our transit rental project in Denver called the Denison, we did something a little different. And they don't have to be big things, they can be very small things. Uh, we introduced a unique gathering area that also serves as an event space uh, that provides specific areas for food trucks. And that's provided in that little half circle. So we actually uh, designed an area where those food trucks could stage uh, for a private or public event. So it's not an afterthought, it's purposeful, and it's also been very successful. Next, please. And then our, uh, another project of ours in Denver called the, the Henry, this is 400 units, uh, 100 units to the acre. Uh, so instead of smaller physically separated courtyards, we created a one acre great park. That's right, one acre. Uh, so this area contains uh, numerous active and passive amenities in one great space. And our inspiration is a local regional 100 year old park that is loved by all Denverites. And that kind of informed our design uh, to create this large great park uh, within this residential community. And so it's been also very popular and quite successful. Next. And you can see just some of the images of the, uh, the varying uh, levels of uh, amenity in terms of passive and active, and uh, not only within the courtyard, but to the exterior as well. There's great views to the west. So it's a highly amenitized project. We did something different with Parterre, which we mentioned previously. Uh, what makes Parterre different is that we started with branding right up front, understanding what it truly meant to live here first. 
Uh, we didn't wait till we had the project approved and under construction. We created the brand identity early on in the process, which helped us show the neighbors how we were gonna fit in. And I mean, truly fit in with the community. It helped us with our city entitlements because the city knew we were thinking about the important things. And obviously it's gonna help us sell homes later on because we're creating a, a place that's truly special that uh, fits in with the surrounding area. So with Parterre, it was all about welcome to the garden. Less, less like uh, life in the farm, like rain dance, but more towards like welcome to the flower garden. With Parterre, there are five neighborhoods. Each have their own identity underneath the overall umbrella of Parterre as a whole. Each neighborhood's logo, when put together, creates the overall Parterre logo, which is kind of cool. It's kind of like each neighborhood is like a flower in a bigger bouquet of flowers. Here's the same slide as before, showing the flower gardens taking shape, all again about welcome to the garden and implementing that brand. You know, finally, here's the typical outward facing branding stuff you would normally see. But the key here and why it's different is we did this right up front. We understood the demographics, the brand identity as the first step. And it, we used it to help with talking with the neighborhood groups, working through entitlements and working through the design. We wanna thank you for joining us in Design Bites featuring secrets of creating successful communities. So in summary, remember, one, offer a mix of housing choices, design special places, create walkable, connected neighborhoods, provide safe and friendly streets, be environmentally sensitive, and finally, don't be afraid to do something different. So as you design your next great place where people wanna live, and where they wanna work and play, carefully create the vision and enjoy the journey. Next. So if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to Jared or myself. Our emails are on the screen. Uh, a replay of this design bite will be available and sent to you soon. And don't forget to check out the next design bite talking about smaller ga gathering areas, which is on March 18th. So thanks again for coming and take care. Thank you, have a great day.